Another edition of the Nuga Splash Spotlight Series tonight is going to be featuring uh, offensive coordinator for the Hickson Wildcats, Sean Cooley, and rising senior Chase Bernard joining us in studio right here on Off the Bench Radio on Talk 102.3. And guys, we just want to thank you both uh, for making time to uh, come down here and talk with us and hang out and uh, give us a little bit of your uh, your time during the summer. How are we doing this evening? Yeah, man, I appreciate you guys for having us. You got me. Sorry. Appreciate y'all for having us. Um, it's been a good summer so far, and just uh, just appreciate y'all for having us. Chase, welcome in, my man. And you know, like, like we just mentioned, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to be a, a rising senior this year, so uh, kind of uh, getting ready for your senior year in, in the classroom, but also on the field as well. Uh, how, how's your summer been going? Getting ready for the uh, 2024 football season? Uh, it's been great. Uh, we've been on the field working hard for football um, most of the summer, and you know that's. I wouldn't want to spend it any other way than out there with my team, my boys, um, getting ready for this season. Yeah, well, for me, uh, the story of Hickson football for the last year was one of the better ones we had, and it started the Jamboree. Uh, you know, Luke Finch goes down with an injury, uh, put him out for almost the entire season. I think he fought hard to get back there in the playoffs. Um, and then, you know, in that middle stretch there where they, they go on the six-game run kind of out of nowhere, you got a first-year coach. Um so just, I guess, talk about what it's like as a coach. You know, you're kind of a first-year coach last year, and your your quarterback goes down in the jamboree. Like, what are you thinking at the time, and kind of how do you adjust and, you know, maybe reflect on last year a little bit before we focus on this year? Right. Well, I think, you know, Luke going down, that was that was some, definitely some adversity for us to go through. But, you know, I knew that Chase had played quarterback, and I – it's for me. It's always we got to find a way. So it's just like life. There's there's things that happen in life, and uh, we got to figure out a way to get through it. And so, or, originally it was you know a shock, and it, it was it was bad that he went down. And I felt bad for him, but it was like it's my job as the coordinator of offense. We got to figure out a way, you know, to put a a new offense together with you know a different quarterback. And Chase did a phenomenal job. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. He had one week of practice at quarterback before mm. the actual season started. You know, we started off rough. It wasn't anything Chase did. Chase, his first two games, he threw for over 200 yards in both of those games. So he did a really good job. And I think just the team around us, you know, when we went to Oodawa week three and we, we ended up pulling that game out and we, we just kind of got the buy-in there and we kind of didn't really let up, you know, for that six-game stretch and, you know, played really well. And I think we peaked a little too early, you know, but – um, you know, these 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 kids they they just work really really hard and you know um, we just we just came up a little short in that red bank game but you know things happen for a reason and, and that's just kind of how it is. That was kind of my follow up question there. I mean, obviously you said you had to adjust some things on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, was was there a a, a, lo- a big transition there as far as scheme? Because I mean, you have you had a guy like Coco Kendricks in the backfield mm-hmm. as well to kind of help with that as well Mm -hmm. so i mean how how tough was that so you know the schemes like our run schemes were were really the same and actually i added you know with chase being back there his ability to run between the tackles he's a bigger kid than luke you know i didn't want to run luke in between tackles and get him hurt you know it's ironic that it happened the way that it did but i was actually to able to install more you know quarterback runs um, I took some of our passing concepts that, that fit Luke really well out, and I implemented some that fit Chase a little better and getting him on the run and, and rolling out. And, you know, our screen game was big in that too. Um, so we really just focused on our run game and uh, with the quarterback. And then obviously Coco, who's, you know, incredible for us. And then we really worked on the screen game. Um, and we, we threw the ball downfield a little bit, but we didn't do it as much that, that, than we would have if Luke was there. But we really – relied on the screen game and our uh, playmakers get them the ball in space. Uh, Chase, kind of talk about that from your perspective. It's, uh, you know, like Coach Cooley said, definitely a, a good lesson in overcoming adversity. And, you know, you, know, you think something's going to, you know, stay on track, you know, whether it's, you know, at work or at school or even on the football field like, like that. You know, anything can happen at the turn of a dime. So kind of talk about the process that you went through. And obviously, like Coach Clue said, you did have some quarterback experience. So it wasn't a huge shock for you. But still, you know, like you said, a week before the season starts, uh, th- uh, new plans get thrown in for, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, this team is not new when it comes to experiencing adversity. Um, all last year with Luke going down, players getting suspended, injuries. I mean, we took it from every angle. But one thing about us is we roll with it really well, and we always find a way to hold up the standard for Hickson football um, with that adversity. Uh, when Luke went down, 
I kind of figured that there might be a small chance that I might be put back behind the center. And then when I got that call, I knew that I had to do what I had to do for my team. Um, so I got with Coach Cooley. He was real good about helping me learn real quick, learn the offense. And we met every Sunday after every game before the new week and went over film. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that me and Coach Cooley got to do that was a big factor in taking on that adversity. Um, and I think we took it on well. Like Coach Cooley said, I wish we would have – Stuck it out better in the Red Bank game, but, you know, you get what you get, and we're hoping for a different outcome this season. Well, Justin, obviously, you know, it, it worked, and the, the team rallied around each other. Uh, six straight wins after starting 0-2, inclu- starting with that Udawal game. That was our red zone game of the week mm-hmm. that week, so we saw it firsthand there, and uh, what led to a seven-win season for the Wildcats. Yeah, it was a, fu- a fun game, fun season for, for uh, Hickson, and I know, you know, schedule's tough this year. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun schedule to look at. There's really no weeks off for you guys. Um, and obviously kind of buried a little bit, but also uh, academic all region. Um, kind of talk about that and what it takes. Did that help you kind of in the short turnaround to, to becoming the quarterback in short notice? And kind of how do you uh, view academics and balance that between two sports? Um, I take my academics really seriously. Um, I try and challenge myself with the higher end classes. You know, I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I do like to try and get some challenging classes in my schedule. A lot of my classes, my coaches are very involved in, so the sports kind of mix in with them and doesn't affect them too much. You know, the coaches help me out with, like, the work and stuff and due dates, and they understand that I'm going to be tired. Um, But I really try and take – because school after high school, college and stuff, I mean, grades are a big part of that, so I really try and focus on academics outside of sports. Yeah, for sure. No doubt about that. And, um, you know, just looking over, you know, going back to last year's team, obviously, you know, and like Justin mentioned, the schedule this year is almost an exact mirror of last year, you know, starting out with East Hamilton, Meigs County, then Udawa, and then rolling right into region play right there. So talk about, you know, last season a little bit, I guess, Coach Cleary, from your perspective, because, you know, the most wins since 2014, seven, like we mentioned, including the six in a row that began with that 21 to 16 comeback win at Udawa. Uh, most points scored since 2014 and 256. And then if you look at the offensive numbers, it was almost split right down the middle, 1,200 yards passing and 1,264 rushing. So kind of talk about, is that kind of what you strive for, uh, the balance on both sides of the offense? or Yeah, for me, offensively, num- thing number one is to win the football game. So whatever we have to do to win the football game, you know, if we, if we have 100 yards in the game and we score seven points, obviously I want more for that and – more than that, but if we went seven to nothing, I'm 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 okay with it. We want to fix it, but for me, it's just setting our kids up for the the best for them to succeed. So if we got you know really good receivers, so we might throw the ball a little bit more, get them the ball. I'm just I'm all about getting the our best players the football and and the the biggest amount of space as possible. Um, I I did like that we were balanced last year. I don't want to be one dimensional. Don't want to be really run heavy or pass heavy. So I, I like I like the uh, the splits there. Um, we obviously want to average more points a game. I know um, 25 or 24, whatever it was last year, it was, you know, from the year before, I think it was a 11, 12-point jump. So that, that was good for us um, and hope, hoping to make a bigger jump this year. But, you know, it's just our, our kids are bought in. I think they're, they're determined to, to, do, to do a little better. And Chase, you play both sides of the ball. So, um, kind of tell us from your your perspective: Would you rather uh, stop a, a back in the middle of the defense at linebacker and, and get a really big hit or tackle, or do you like the offensive side and putting your putting the ball in your hands, making things happen? Um, I'd rather be on the defensive side, making a big stop. Okay. Um, I came into high school playing quarterback, but I've always had that urge to play on the defensive side. Um, hoping to get a little bit more of that action last year, but we were hit with that adversity and had to adjust to it. So, and Coach Gilly, would you rather <laughs> do you, would you rather have him on your side of the ball or a, 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 wherever he's most needed on the team? I want to have him on both sides of the ball. So that's <laughs> is that a, is that an answer? Uh, that's perfect. I, we got him. We've got him uh, split in time. At you know, we got Luke back, so we're working him and and Chase is playing some tight end H back for us, and and we're splitting time with another player we have who's who's really good at Adam Billingsley. So. He's going to be on both sides this year. Just talk about going from year one to year two. What's easier? What's kind of is it? Is it been a smoother transition? You obviously kind of have experiences at skill positions and key mm-hmm. positions. Kind of talk about uh, the challenges or maybe the the lighter burden from going from one to two. Well, year one is always a 
you never know what to expect. Just to be honest, when you take the job, you go in, you don't know what to expect, and it's all about trying to get your stuff installed, you know, as quick as possible. You're going from year one to year two. It's been a, I mean, we're way ahead than than we were last year, and I mean that like our kids know the know the standard. They know how we play on offense. You know, we want them to play fast, and we're 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 really we're really developing and really able to work on those small details as far as coaching details this year and, like, why? Why are we doing this stuff? So it's been a really, really good transition for us in, in year two, and like I said, we were way ahead and uh, way ahead of schedule. So it's been really good. To talk about just, I guess, Coach Cooley, just the process there, you know, obviously you have your region schedule set, and obviously it's it's pretty stacked, obviously with the likes of Red Bank and Signal Mountain, a lot of good storylines there as well. So talk about the non-conference, non-conference, non-region opponents there. I'm sure it's it can be tough based on, you know, scheduling and, you know, different you know, county school systems in their breaks and stuff like that. Kind of talk about just, you know, finding ways to, you know, still – get work against really good opponents you know with the likes of like Meigs County and uh, East Hamilton yeah well I mean we got two of them right off the bat right we got East Ham <clears throat> excuse me and Megs right off the bat and that's two really good football teams and I think for us how we look at you know non-region games is we want to we want to get a, a playoff test that's kind of what we want you know and, and schedule it don't always work out that way but we want really tough teams who are going to make us playoff ready make us region ready and who better to start with in East Hamilton and and Meigs County, two well-coached teams, and they play really hard. So, I mean, that's that's kind of how we look at it. And then you also have an Udawa team that's looking to get a little bit of revenge against you guys because yeah. they, they, you know, had the victory in their hands. And mm-hmm. then, you know, just you know, probably one of the best games we saw last year, Justin, was that, yeah, that was uh, fun, Hickson yeah. game right there. So, uh, yeah, just kind of, it's, you know, you 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 talk about just the highlights. We went back and looked at some of those. I did at least this week, and you're talking about just willing a way to win. And that was actually Coach Nick Rivers' first win as a head coach, and you know just the emotion he had on in his voice post game, thinking about his father who had passed away a few years before. He said, and you know it, you could tell it meant a lot to him. Obviously, being a Hickson guy, so it means a lot to him there. 2003 alum there. So, can I talk about? Coach Rivers, you know, from from you know you playing for him and you coaching for him, Coach Cooley, and just kind of what he means to the program and what he means to you individually. You know, I think Nick Rivers is Hickson. He is Hickson football. You know, he he kind of embodies, you know, the community. Um, he does a really good job with me. Like me, me and him work really well together. He's a very good delegator, which a lot of head coaches are not. They, you know, a lot of people micromanage. He's not that way. He lets me. You know, he said, it's my dog, my pony, whatever, how, whatever that saying is, I get the offense. And, you know, he, he puts people, he puts coaches in position to do do a job. And, if you know, if you don't do it, it's on you kind of thing. And, and he's really easy to work for, you know, and I just I think he's doing an incredible job. Uh, Chase, talk about it from your perspective because, you know, like we mentioned, he obviously played for Hickson, so he knows the battles that you're, you guys go through and finding a way to win. So kind of talk about playing for a coach like uh, Coach Rivers. Uh, I've known Coach Rivers for my entire high school career. I came in, um, didn't really get to see him much my first two years because I was more on the quarterbacks um, working with the offense. But these last two years, he's always called me his guy. You know, he's always there for the players. Um, Got my concussion last year. He was the first guy I saw in my hospital room. I mean, he's always there. Um, Like Coach Cooley says, I really think he does a really good job of putting other coaches and other people in a really good spot to succeed. And he does the same thing with his players. You know, he coaches us up. We have our standard, and he expects us to go out and fulfill that standard. And if we don't, if we fall short, he's always there to pick us back up. Uh, yeah, Chase. So, you know, we, I've, uh, obviously Coco was probably my player of the year last year. I thought he's a tough kid. He's fun to watch. Um, you can kind of coach talk about replacing him, but to me, you know, losing Richard Bernie on the defensive side, talk about that, maybe having a defensive teammate uh, not being there and maybe what you put on you. Um, I think offensively, you know, moving moving you around, having Finch back will be will, – will kind of ease that Coco loss there. But talk about losing that defensive presence there on that side and maybe how that's going to affect your, your approach to defense this year. Um, losing Richard will uh, – I don't really think it will affect us too much. Richard was a great ball player. Um Hands down, can't really say anything about that. He knows his way around football. But we have some freshmen coming up that I think with some development can turn out to not necessarily take over his spot and fill it like fully, but can kind of cover up some of the loss that we're going to have there. And we also have some guys moving around playing other positions that are going to help take some stress off of that. 
So, you know, I mean, Chase, you know, like Justin mentioned, multi-sport athlete for Hicks, and you play baseball as well in the spring. So pretty much, you know, you, you're, 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 you know, donning the black and gold pretty much all, all year long on, 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 whether it's on the football field or the baseball diamond. So, um, you know, just look, looking at your, uh, you know, your X profile looks like he, it says third base shortstop and outfielder for the Wildcats. So can I talk about just, you know, you being able to adapt to those different positions because all three, especially on the defensive side of the ball there on, on the baseball diamond, uh, probably has, a you know, several different ways that you have to, to play the ball coming at you. Um, with any sport I play, I like to think of myself as the glue guy. Um, I'm the kind of guy that's going to go out and play wherever coach needs me and be able to pick up on stuff quick enough to be put in the game with maybe a little less practice than another dude, but be able to fulfill that spot to the best of my ability, whether it's baseball or football. With baseball, I played every position but two. Um, was kind of hoping I could get them all this year because that would have been a cool thing to have, but I did what the team needed to when they needed me to, and I'm always going to give my hardest out there no matter what sport it is or what position I'm playing. Is that a goal for the senior year this year, you would say, personally? Absolutely. Play all the positions in one season? I don't don't think that's ever been done before, has it? Good. That'd be a rarity. I'm going to say it's never been done before, and we'll we'll make it a thing. For sure. So Uh, so talk about two-sport training. Are you in football shape? Can you get in football shape? Are you ever – what's the kind of the training from going from baseball to football and then vice versa? Um, With football, we've been working all summer – with coach montgomery and one thing about him is he's going to push you until you're about to crack i mean he is going to give everything you got and whether no matter what sport you're playing I mean, he's going to get you in the shape you need to be in i think we're the hardest working team in our district just because of our coaching staff and how hard they push us um, when it comes to switching from football to baseball um, i jump straight back in baseball is not as much heavy lifting but more endurance type stuff but you know, it's always good to have that football training first because a little bit of strength never hurt anything, you know, going into the baseball season. Uh, f- favorite rivalry uh, for football and baseball for your high school? It, I mean, it, it could be totally different. I'm not sure exactly the, the region breakdown, but is there a team that you just – it gets you geared up to play? I mean, obviously you're geared up to play no matter who you're playing on any given night, but so, obviously some of those teams across the area give you a little bit more juice for sure. Saudi Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what sport we play, Saudi Daisy is always at the top of our hit list. Um, me personally, and I think the team will back that up. It doesn't matter what we're playing. I want to whoop those guys. Circle your calendar. Fr- Friday, September 27th <laughs> yeah, maybe. at Hickson High School. Shocker, right? Saudi and Saudi Daisy and Hickson don't like each other. I'm Imagine shocked. that for sure. So, uh, you know, since you, you're a multi-sport athlete, Justin's asked this question to a, a few of our other multi-sport athletes we've had on this series. Would you have, rather have a – game-winning uh, home run in the bottom of the seventh inning or a game-sealing interception since you like playing defense so much? Um, I'm more of a baseball guy. Okay. I love football, and I've I've played football my entire high school career, but I've played baseball since I was a, a little guy, so I would really love to see a game-winning home run. I like it. So favorite baseball team? The, the Braves. The Braves, of course. Coach Cooley, are, are you a baseball fan, Tim? Oh, yeah. Atlanta yeah, Braves? Yeah, Braves all the way, baby. Okay, cool. I, I think if anybody <laughs> watches Hicks or watched Hicks in last year's tough, tough team, always tough, always going to hit you in the mouth. Is that something that's taught? Do you is it? How do you kind of approach like instilling a, a toughness or an edge or kind of what your team may be the, the face of your team? Well, I think you got to be number one authentic as a coach. I think you have to be who you are, and I think you have to be that in a rel- relentless manner. You know, that's kind of what I am. I don't try to be anything I'm not. You know, I raise my voice sometimes. Sometimes I don't have to. And I just I go about things, you know, that way. And I, I think preparation, I think all that matters. The details matter. And I think just just being – and and it can be taught a little bit. Some of it can't be because you either got grit or you don't. I mean, in my opinion, you either got it or you don't. And, you know, we, we practice them hard when we got the pads on. I mean, we go at it, you know. And we, uh, you know, we start off practice with a thing called spotlight. And – we circle up. It's not the old school bull in the ring where, you know, that's the outlawed. I mean, I'll, I'll get sued if uh, that's what we're doing, but that's not what we're doing. We'll call them out, get two of them, and they let them go at it best out of three. You know, and it's random. It could be anybody, so you got to be ready. Uh, it sounds like the old Oklahoma drill to a certain mm-hmm. extent, Justin good, Sims. Good time. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. toughness, and I think, it, I think it pays off up there. I've always, I've always been impressed with those Hicks and teams the last few years. How, how juiced do you get for something like that, Chase, being out there as well? You know, just being being a guy that I mean, I'm sure you want to compete no matter what, no matter who who it is or who it's against. You definitely want to get out there and get the best of somebody. Oh yeah, we're always 
Uh, one thing about us is, you know, we have a standard for practice, and it's to come ready to work and ready to embrace um, that physical aspect of the game. Spotlight is a great way to start practice because it gets you in the headspace that you got to perform in front of all these people one-on-one in these big moments, and that can be the difference in a football game um, is one one play, and Spotlight's a great way to – or for us to, like, prepare for that and to set the mood for the rest of practice. Jesse, throwing it to you real quick. Tell me about the spotlight drill between me and Justin Sims. Who would go? Who would win one on one in the spotlight drill? Any, many, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, It'd probably be nobody would win in that situation. Seeing us go at it, right? Honestly, there. I, I just ugly. see two guys just panning and sweating like Some, crazy. Pretty much. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, taking out on he, the stretch. Hit the nail on the head right there for sure. So uh, <laughs> how how is Luke Finch as a lifeguard? I hope nobody. You, I hope nobody's even. After you, okay. I hope nobody's <laughs> even close to drowning. Chase, <laughs> go ahead and chase your thoughts on that as well. How big of a lifeguard would your teammate Luke Finch be? <laughs> if I had to choose someone to save me if I was drowning, I'd put my trust in Luke. There we go. There you go. I hope he doesn't. Let me drown. That is a true teammate right there. So uh, I think he's just look. He's, he's going to be looking for you for sure more now since you gave him the uh, the old <laughs> endorsement right there, saving his li- uh, saving your life right there. That's good stuff. So uh, Justin, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, just talk about coming back. Maybe uh, you got a little taste of what it would be like to have Luke back at the tail end of last season. Obviously, he missed a lot with a with a knee injury, I believe. Um, just kind of talk about this year's team. Um, I think you mentioned there's like a, a young freshman class. And not a ton of seniors, so just talk about where you're at and uh, how you feel going into this matchup with East Hamilton Week One. Yeah, I feel really good about where we're at right now. Um, like you said, we got we have a smaller senior class. It's not tiny, but we have a smaller one. But you know, most of this, those seniors, not all of them, have a big impact on us. So um, huge freshman class, huge junior class. Um, Luke, you know, he he came back. He was able to play in that playoff game after Chase got knocked out. He was able to play. He wasn't. He obviously wasn't ready. He was cleared to play, but he actually broke his ankle. Is what happened. But in practice, he'd be riding around in that little scooter. He'd be throwing football. He would not ever use his lower body. And then whenever he got back to full go, you know, he was using his lower body. He was throwing that thing like sixty yards, not even meaning to. So he had no. He had no idea how strong his arm um, has been. And him and I've been working really, really hard this off season. You know, starting in January, actually before probably December, we've been working on getting some touch on on his ball. You know, his arm's incredibly strong. He can make every throw. He's very athletic as well. He's really going to um, thrive in this offense. You know, Lord willing, he stays healthy, and we got a lot of a lot of people to get the ball to. You know, Chase included. We got a lot of people to get the ball to, and we got a pretty good, um, pretty good six to seven offensive lineman that we feel good about right now. Yeah, and and you were talking about the uh, the seven on seven at UTC, mm-hmm. uh, you know, recently, and you know, seeing that firsthand, you know, Luke has the wheels to scramble out of the pocket mm-hmm. and, and you know buy time and find guys down the field, and you know, if based on that seven on seven, he's going to have a lot of weapons to find down the field and to make plays for sure. I, I think you know we got I told you guys off air we got about ten eleven guys you know we feel good about putting in there we've got a, a heavy rotation of three so we got three three receiver positions we got a heavy rotation of three at each position we got two freshmen that um could come in and i'll be honest with you they'd be playing for a lot of people right now you know they're they're still trying to learn the offense and all that but you know they're going to be really good football players so a lot of weapons in the arsenal it sounds like they're justin sims oh absolutely uh just talk coach kind of i think an underappreciated aspect of what you guys do just you know staffing wise and coaching wise kind of just the difficulties that you face as just far as like the challenges of being a coach and and uh, how you address that and like I said, kind of staffing and where you guys are at uh, with that. Yeah, I feel I feel really good about our staff. You know, especially on the offensive side. You know, it's that's who I work with the most. You know, offensive line coach Sam Montgomery. Him and I have been friends for you know over ten years um, and coached together for about five. And we have very similar but very different philosophies. If that makes sense, we want to we want to run the football right. And he's he's an old Veer guy. You know that's what he kind of come from. He's he's in, you know Veer guy. You know obviously we don't do that. We're in the gun, but you know we we have a, a similar you know mindset of what we want to do. Um, and he's really really good. He's he's I'm gonna go ahead and call it. He's the best offensive line coach in the area. You know he just is. And um, you know Coach Bernard, Chase's dad. Coach Bernard does a really good job with our receivers. Coach Thames, Jaron Thames, helps him out with the receivers. He has a big role in defense, so he does. Uh, he helps us on offense as well. And Coach Harris, Colton Harris, is actually a kid that I uh, I coached when I was at Sequatchie County, and uh, I think 2019 was when he graduated, or 2020. 
and he's coaching our H back tight end spots and you know th- these guys it's it's a it's a group of guys that really worked well together and we all have a common goal nobody's trying to you know out wit who and nobody's trying to throw out I mean everybody's got ideas but nobody's trying to push their agenda we all work really well together and I think it really shows for the kids uh, you know uh, Chase Justin asked Coach Cooley about you know this upcoming season you know getting started with the Jamboree a couple of uh, you know good opportunities for the public to see you guys before it gets cranked up against East Hamilton talk about you know just the the year for you obviously your senior year so you only have 10 more guaranteed opportunities on the football field to uh, make memories there talk about the upcoming season and what what, what it means to you and uh, what, what what are you expecting out of your team this year uh, I'm trying to take everything in as it comes you know I hate that it's my last year but I'm really excited to get in there with my guys um, a lot of our seniors are really excited to try and push that 10 game limit to you know a few extra playoff games and take it as far as we can um we don't have a set goal for our season right now our goal is going to come as far as we're going to take it and we're hoping this year to take it way past what people think we can i like it so um you know we um we always ask our guests here kind of talk about the family aspect whether they're coaching whether they're playing because i mean you know fam- families are a, a big piece of you know what you guys do whether it's coaching on the sidelines or playing out there between the hashes chase so chase talk about that from your perspective because obviously your dad is on staff uh you know coaching with coach cooley and coach rivers and just kind of talk about you know just your family your mom and your dad just kind of what they mean to you and kind of your uh just your path uh to to, to being on the football field and the baseball diamond too um i love having dad out there you know um sometimes i try and stay away from him a little bit because i'm around him all the time at home and football field is kind of where i can get away from him but he's great out there he kind of stays in his own and doesn't mess with me too much um both my parents are real supportive of anything i want to do with my career whether it's football baseball or even going into the workforce um, and i know they do anything for me and dad being there throughout my entire sports career has been really great and a lot of my core memories with him has been through either baseball or football and being on some sort of field playing some sort of ball and coach Clue, so that same question to you obviously you have a family at home and you know from the coaches we talk to football wives are the the mvps of any of any family for sure right so kind of talk about just your the family aspect from your angle mm-hmm. now obviously you know they're in the stands cheering the team on on friday nights but i uh, kind of talk about your, your family as yeah, well i have an absolutely beautiful wife who i completely outkicked my coverage there um kylie i love you i know you're listening because you've been texting me and just don't give her the number to call in she'll be asking all <laughs> oh, kinds of questions yeah. that so uh she's she's awesome uh she's a great she's she's the best wife that you know i could ask for and as far as the football stuff i got a lot of a lot of time away you know and she understands that and she's a trooper and we got a two-year-old son knox who's um he's growing way too fast but you know he's he's definitely uh he's (laughs) he's definitely worth his weight in gold and i love him so much but those two are they mean the world to me and i i I really appreciate them both is that two-year-old shaping up to be a linebacker or on the offensive side I'll, I'll be honest with you he's he's like running and tackling stuff so i think he and he's left-handed i don't know like i i, I was kind of bummed at first because i'm like he'll never play shortstop you know <laughs> he probably he might not play quarterback he'll have to play in the outfield you know is there's just but if he pitches he's gonna get a scholarship because they just sign every left-handed pitcher they can so there you go. we'll see you know we'll see what he wants to do got a few just a few off the cuff things we want to end the show with. You know, we've asked some of these uh, athletes and other coaches just over, you know, during the football season and whatnot about superstitions because everybody's different about superstitions. Do you guys have any type of situation? So I guess, Chase, let's start with you since you play on Friday nights. Any pre game or post game superstitions or traditions that, uh, that you do to get ready to uh, uh, lace them up and hit the gridiron? Um, I don't have any for football, but I'm sure the second you asked that question, my mom had one pop into mind, and it's for baseball. We had a little stretch where we were winning a few games, so I didn't wash my sliding shorts until we won or until mm. we lost one, and ended up having to not be able to ride with the group because they smelled so bad. <laughs> and finally, finally lost the game and had to wash them. That was my only superstition. Uh, coach, how about you on the coaching side? Do you, is there obviously you know? Uh, certain songs i mean i think you requested eminem early on so is, yeah, is there absolutely. like a, i'm sure it, i'm sure that's part of the ch- a pre-game tradition or superstitions yeah. there but is there anything else that sticks so, out this is gonna be kind of weird uh because i did request eminem and i'm gonna take you on a curveball okay so 
Number one, I get uh, sweet tarts, the big chewy ones, the four mm-hmm. pack, the purple, red, yellow, and green. I got to get those, and I got to get a Dr. Pepper. Okay, and then I throw on '90s country. Okay, so it's like the complete opposite of Eminem. I got to cool down, calm down a little bit, vibe, and then whenever the pregame music hits on, you know, wherever we're at, then that's that's a little different. I can get amped up, but I don't I don't want to get too amped up, so I turn on some like Travis Tritt or. Brooks and Dunn or something like that and just kind of mellow out a little bit. So, obviously, it sounds like Sweet Tarts and Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn Heck is the yeah. go-to for Coach Cooley, <laughs> yeah. for Heck sure, yeah. Justin Sims. Yeah, it's absolutely. And I talk, you know, you're a younger coach and recently have played, but just talk mm-hmm. about, obviously, we've got 97 Sports as one of our uh, sponsors here, uh, show show supporters. Mm-hmm. Just talk about, you, you guys show up with social media, head of social media back here. Talk about yeah. how... The equipment games changed, the helmet games changed, yeah. and then how social media has impacted the sport. Well, there's a lot of better equipment just th- than there was whenever, <laughs> even when I played. I graduated in 2011, and I'm pretty sure I had an out of date helmet from like 10, year, 10 years. So, it, I mean, probably not, but it felt like it. But, you know, our equipment, you know, our, our especially our helmets, you've got the Guardian helmet things to help with concussions. You know, we've got really good shoulder pads. Everything has really advanced in the game, and and as far as social media stuff, you know, you got to be out there. You got to, you know, we're not on as much as we should be. It's it's just hard to, but you know, we we uh, kids look. What are they on all the time? Their phones, right? So the TikToks, the Twitter, the stuff like that. You got to be have a brand. You got to be presentable on those things for you know get kids out to play. And you know, for the student athletes too, you know, the digital age is allowing these kids to be seen by mm-hmm. more you know coaches at the next level to get mm-hmm. more opportunities with huddle. And obviously, like you said, social media is a big thing. It's, it's it's free promotion, so it's definitely a good thing, so for sure. Absolutely. Um, Chase, how about you? Just t- talk about, I guess, the social media aspect for, as a student athlete there, and, you know, it's a good way to get your highlights out there, whether it was a, you know, sticking the tail back, you know, a- up at the line of scrimmage or, you know, catching a pass for a touchdown. Uh, absolutely. I'm on Huddle and Twitter, and I put any highlights, any stats, any videos, you know, even if it's just something my mom took from the stands, anything that can – be seen by a college coach that would, you know, maybe catch an eye. I'm posting out there. I'm reaching out to coaches. Um, Social media is a great tool for players to just get out there to where college coaches don't have to come to you. You know, you can go to them, meet them halfway, show them you're putting in the work um, and your dedication through social media, and I think it's a great tool. Well, guys, again, we cannot thank you again enough for just coming down here, hanging out with us, and being a part of Off the Bench Radio and the uh, Nougat Splash Spotlight Series this summer. We appreciate it. Good luck in 2024. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, you know, for anybody out there, Friday, August the 16th, you can see the Hicks and Wildcats at the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield Prelude to the Championship, taking on Marion County and Central uh, at 7 and 8 o'clock. So uh, get out there, support them, and see some good athletes. And uh, looking forward to seeing how the Wildcats do in 2024, Justin. That'll be a fun one.